I grew up in South Louisiana, the fourth of five kids. We were a typical American bunch of siblings. Melissa, the oldest, left for college first and I cried so hard the day she left. She had taken the train to New York and all day long I held the Amtrak schedule and tracked where her train was. My big brother was a state champion runner in high school. I remember cheering at the top of my lungs for him at races and you can hear my 11 year old voice forever documented in a home video where I yell, come on Jerry, don't let Michael Monahan beat you. Natalie is my closest sibling in age, and though we had a love-hate relationship growing up, we are nothing but love now. I think it had to do with the fact that I am a rule follower, and Natalie was always breaking the rules. My little brother Lee and I traveled together a lot with our grandparents in the summers and year after year to our soccer tournaments. Our memories together bring us to tears with laughter. I love my siblings, and I feel fortunate to have them. Of course, the memories were not all rosy. With the larger family, there was financial stress. I was used to hand-me-downs and saving my allowance to buy the things I really wanted. And of course, there were sibling fights. And then there's the family history of mental illness. When I was about 12, my oldest sister attempted suicide and I became suddenly and starkly familiar with the terms depression, medication, and mental hospital. In my mid-20s, my little brother tried to. Fortunately, they are both still with us. My husband, Travis, and I met in college, and though he told me during the first week of freshman year that I was the most beautiful girl he'd ever seen, we spent our four years there as just friends. I fell for him senior year, but he was dating somebody else. Fast forward to the next year, and his relationship had ended. He came up to visit me in Chicago, where I was living, and we both knew right away that we would get married. Some of our early conversations as a couple in love were about if we wanted kids, and the answer was yes, moving on to how many. We mostly agreed on this. I had settled on the number four. Travis's were, responses were as many as we can, or seven. <laughs> With the treasured memories I had of my own siblings, I had a high standard for the life that I was going to provide our four potential children. I would have them bond at each other's sporting events, encourage letter writing when the oldest went off to college, talk them through sibling arguments, and pile them in the car for long road trips. I dreamed of the perfect life we would have with our large family. We had our first child, a daughter, in 2008. Things were good. I was anxious after the birth, maybe a bit too anxious, but I didn't seek any sort of treatment, and when she was 14 months old, we found out I was pregnant again. It was planned, we were having at least four kids, remember? And I was already 29, there was no time to waste. I had an anxiety-ridden pregnancy, but it still did not occur to me to ask for help with these feelings, and we kept on keeping on. For a handful of reasons, one being that I longed to be a stay-at-home mom, we arranged to move to Portland, Oregon, so my husband could pursue a new career. We moved when my son was 10 days old. I said, days, yes away from our entire support system to a place where the sun literally does not shine. <laughs> Life had become difficult and far from my dream. My world came crashing down around me. I struggled for three months before reaching out for help. It was then that I was diagnosed with postpartum depression and started medication and therapy. My recovery took several more months and then Travis got depressed. Part of the reason being that he was so exhausted from supporting me in my recovery. If I told you that after he recovered, I went spiraling down again, I wouldn't be lying. And now he's being treated again. So we find ourselves here with two amazing kids and a few depressions later. And what was that we wanted? Four kids, seven kids, as many as we can. What if that as many as we can is two? Some days we look at each other and say two is enough, but the next day we'll say just one more. It's the hardest decision we've ever had to make, I'll tell you that, when your heart pulls you one way, but your head pulls in the other direction. But we've come a long way since our dating dreams of many children. And because we've been able to stand up to depression, fight for our own health and happiness, I know that this life that we are living right now with our two children, this is what is right for us and what I always dreamed of.